Hi! Thanks for tuning into my official YouTube channel, Reverend Me Ling. Been known by a few names, Reverend Me Ling, Reverend Susan Me Ling, Susan Me Ling, Lady Me Ling, Lady Dory Bell. So there was this guy I knew over the years. I met him when he was married to his wife at the time, Kim, and the San Antonio Pagan community before being introduced to him essentially in the San Antonio BDSM community, though realistically, I think I was actually involved with the Dallas-Fort Worth. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, actually I was. I was involved with the Dallas-Fort Worth BDSM community before finding out about the San Antonio BDSM community in regards to specifically Temple of Flesh. I had already been involved in the classes and demos um, in regards to more house type of situations well before um, finding out about Temple of Flesh. I actually found out about the classes and demos well before um, by it was a 2004, towards the end of 2004, I had already been involved with learning as far as classes and stuff like that, and being um, recommended books to look into to read. Um, <clears throat> and then in, towards the end of either, I think it was 2009 actually, that would be the year. That I found out about Temple of Flesh in, two th in uh, San Antonio. And it was through an individual that I know uh, some individuals who are like family to me. Um, we have a on, on this particular individual. His name is John Vidial. He had gone by the name Celtic Cowboy on FetLife uh, at that time. So in, in 2009, um, was essentially, I don't even know how, I don't even remember how, winding up finding out about that. And uh, I'd already been going to what is now closed, but it was called the Sanctuary for a while by that time. And, um, but again, the events at the Sanctuary were not like the events at Temple of Flesh. Very different in a lot of ways. And so, um, I was invited to the first uniform fetish ball that I had gone to by a uh, Celtic cowboy, also known as John Vidial. And um, he had essentially arranged for me to be pulled on stage because of, um, I just like to dance, I enjoy music. And he knew that if I was called out, to go on stage, I would not go easily because I am actually quite shy despite what I look like. And so that particular night I was pulled up on stage by, and literally pulled up on stage. I had two guys that wound up showing up, one on each side, and they each picked me up off of the ground um, to carry me onto the stage. And, uh, <clears throat> I was extremely upset with a uh, Celtic cowboy, also known as John Vidial. Well, he wound up um, going on in other regards with some other people. Okay, whatever. That was the night that I learned how to walk in stiletto heels. Because <laughs> of the, the transitioning individual who, who taught me how to walk in stiletto heels. I could dance. There was no, I, I get the, but I get the ironic dichotomy. I could dance, no problem. Walking was <laughs> the problem. <laughs> Go figure. It's a little backwards. I get it. Nonetheless. Um, so I had to learn how to walk on my toes <laughs> instead of walking like I walk normally in regular shoes. Because apparently that's more graceful and stuff. Can you tell I grew up as a tomboy with that one? Yes. 
nonetheless, I learned how to, I just don't remember all the time. <laughs> that probably has to do with the after effects of my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, remembering to walk on my toes and essentially tippy toe. <laughs> in stiletto heels and I trip over air. You can see a problem. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> so then there was an issue and I was listening to whatever I had on in wherever I was at the time. And then, um, whatchamacallit, um, across the laptop was breaking news in Fort Hood. And um, I contacted Celtic Cowboy or John Vidal and checked on him. And he had said that um, he had escaped and all these other things and how scary it was and blah, 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 which I don't, de I don't deny that at all. It's just one of those, are the other guys okay? Like, are, is everybody, like, military guys-wise, are they okay? Like, just, you know, and I thought it was befitting. I, I did say it would be befitting if that guy happened to have to go through certain um, <clears throat> situations that I knew occurred at certain times in... Um, at the time, a uh, medical hold unit because of certain things that had occurred when I was in medical hold unit over there. And for someone to do something like that uh, on U.S. soil, um, I, I <laughs> and then he wound up going there and it was like, yay, you know, <laughs> good, good call on that one, you guys, because, um, you know, I mean, not all guys get treated <clears throat> in, in certain regards, but I, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a training facility, and um, there are individuals who would be able to um, <clears throat> extract certain information. And be able to ensure it would not be a problem um, in other regards. So that way, you know, the guys from the United States of America's Armed Forces, didn't matter what branch, uh, were taken care of. And it would be kind of a warning. Like, don't do that. Because that's where you'll wind up. Um... <laughs> I know there are individuals who understand that particular mentality. And with, you know, it being a training facility, um, you know, um, I mean, there are guys who get very good, well taken care of, much better than when I was in medical hold unit before it became warrior transition unit. Uh, however, <laughs> still a residential hospital. And so there are still students who are learning medical stuff. So, um, anyway, uh, that being said, <laughs> um, Still glad that he wound up there and I didn't before wherever he wound up going to and you know. Point being, going back to on topic, um, that being said, I'm a little protective of military guys if that hasn't been figured out by now. <laughs> Anyway, um, law enforcement, fire department, EMS as well. Uh, however, that, that infuriated me that that happened on Fort Hood. It doesn't matter what military base uh, <clears throat> at all. But to make sure that the military would be able to 
get the information that would be necessary to assist to prevent that sort of stuff happening. You know, you know I just thought it was befitting. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of residents in that vicinity. And so, um, that being said, um, John Vidial, also known as Guilty Cowboy, um, on Fat Life. At some point in time, um, he wound up telling me about the, uh, female, the Glory Hole Girl event in, um, and I, and I know I'm, I'm probably out of order on timeline stuff, but had told me about the, uh, Glitterati or something like that, or Glitter, it was a Valentine's Day one, the first year that I had gone, and, um, that was how I found out about it. And, um, met him there, and again, he went and did what he did, and I just spoke with a bunch of people, because <laughs> that's how I am, and just went and talked with people, and, and, uh, got to meet a bunch of people, and, um, then later, I wound up, uh, having to move to Cedar Park. Uh, Texas because of what had occurred in reference to my daughter and McCoy Elementary School and all that and um, the Fort Worth Zoo what happened in reference to that of Carrollton Texas for McCoy Elementary School and um, never at any point in time did Celtic Cowboy also known as John Vidial and I ever have anything to do with one another in that way at all never looked at him that way Ever. Ever. I saw how he treated his ex-wife, Kim Vidial. I liked her so much more. Did not have patience for how he treated her. So it could only be on a one level. It could never, ever, ever cross over that point. Personal preference. So, um, in that reference, um, there was something that had, we were talking on the phone and he found out that I had never seen Lord of the Rings. And he had threatened to tie me to a chair to make me watch it. Well, ironically, my biological mother and biological father were on their way to where I lived at the time with my son and my daughter, albeit my daughter being in and out of the hospitals at the time. And Anna, I had told her about it. She goes, what? You haven't seen The Lord of the Rings? And I looked at her and I go, no, I deal with headaches and migraines. The only movies that I've gone to recently are ones that I take my children to. I force myself to deal with the pain, you know, because I love my children that much <laughs> that I will sit through a movie stare at the screen because I obviously have to pay attention because they're going to want to talk about it and then the loudness and so yeah I love my son and my daughter so much that I will deal with that <laughs> it's excruciatingly painful for me and after getting out of the movie theater, I feel like I'm hung over, you know, the equivalent of having, and I don't even mean drinking the very teeny tiny bit that I can barely tolerate. I'm talking like guys that I have seen freaking down some alcohol and that type of hangover. And even those little itty bitty you know, half a shot of Bailey's mixed with coffee. I have a hangover from that. <laughs> I am definitely a lightweight. No denying that. Um, <clears throat> point being, I have a hangover that usually lasts a couple of days from just a half a shot of Bailey's. So, <laughs> with several cups of coffee, mind you, not one cup of coffee for that half of a shot, like at least five cups of coffee and I'm so drunk <laughs> I'm such a drunk little fairy off of half of a shadow 
Baileys. You can't even have a real Irish coffee. Because <laughs> I'm such a lightweight for alcohol. Give me mead though. Honey mead? Uh, that's, that, ooh, I can't, I, that's so good. <laughs> that's so dangerously good, honey mead. Because I don't taste the alcohol at all. So sweet. <laughs> Hangover so bad. <laughs> Hangovers, headaches, and migraines are not a good combination. Oh my. And <laughs> uh, but it's so good. <laughs> so I don't drink honey mead because I know that I can't just have a little fairy size shot glass. <laughs> I will drink that whole bottle. But I have. I have. I did that once. <laughs> Learned my lesson. It only took one time. <laughs> and that's, that's how painful it was. It took one bottle, one time. That's it. I learned that was, that was that painful. That was that painful that I remembered that particular hangover pain level to this day in 2020. Oh, that's how painful that was. So, I don't drink. And so, <laughs> and if I do, I get drunk off of half of a shot of Baileys. <laughs> Ta-da. And so, <laughs> which is funny because my son saw me have half a shot of Baileys one time. And and then laughed a whole punch because he was like, Mom, I didn't realize how much of a lightweight you are. Got my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and he watched. He watched me, you know, because it was, it was like my birthday or something like that. Went to Olive Garden. I wanted salad. The only way I could eat salad is if I have alcohol. That's it. That is the only way I can have salad. And I really like Olive Garden dressing. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> the only way I can have salad with Olive Garden dressing is if I have alcohol. And then I have a hangover. So, you know. <laughs> you can't do that. Because <laughs> I'm allergic to fresh fruits and vegetables. It's, I know it's a weird allergy. Anyway. So, um, I had told Anna about this discussion I had with Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Vidial, and I was like, yeah, he threatened to tie me down to a chair and, you know, keep my eyes open to make me watch this Lord of the Rings or something. And Anna, my biological mother, how could you just not have seen that movie? Um, easily. <laughs> I did not go to the movie theater. I did not uh, purchase a ticket. <laughs> did not walk into the movie theater um, for any of the movie theater stuff, including to walk towards whatever theater that would be playing. And I did not hand the ticket that I did not purchase <laughs> to the movie person to tell me which theater I should go to to not watch the movie because I didn't go see it. <laughs> that's, that's how that works. And she was offended that I had not seen the Lord of the Rings movie. Or apparently there's more than one. Anyway, I don't care. I didn't, I didn't need to see it. I didn't want to see it. That sort of thing. It's not in any offense to whoever made the movie or was in the movie. It's not in any offense to them. I just deal with headaches and migraines. <laughs> it's loud in movie theaters. Saying, and so, um, but John Vidial, also known as Celtic Cowboy, just, no, I'm going to make you see that. No, you're not. You are not going to make me see it. I don't want to see it. It's not, and again, not in any offense to the actors, actresses, all that sort of stuff. I just am not the type of person that can deal with that. 
And so he tried to convince me on the phone as well as in person that he was going to make me watch it no matter what. I was like, yeah, well, you know what? Um, I will fight you if you try. I will. I will. Um, I'll do what I need to do. So get it through your thick skull. I don't want to see the movie. And so Anna, on the other hand, my biological mother, actually agreed with the guy that she hadn't met. She was like, oh, that, that sounds like a great idea. Then you have to watch it. Or I could not and tell the truth by saying that I didn't. And you could just leave me alone because I didn't see it. I don't want to see it. I don't need to make my pain levels any worse. So don't attempt to do that, okay? Anna, my biological mother, was offended by that. I did not care at all. And so was Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Vidal. Now that particular individual, there was this one point in time where the, the people who are like family to me, um, the, the male in particular of the household came over and in and, 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 the scene being known as Lady Dory Bell, he goes, and there are some who are allowed to call me simply Dory, you know, and that's with an I. <laughs> Dory, you know, yeah, what's going on? And he's like, do you know Celtic Cowboy? I go, yeah, what about him? And the guy's just like, well, he's name dropping you. What, what, what is name dropping? And so he had, meaning the guy, he had told me that one of the females he was involved with had been working at a location near Fort Hood, and Celtic Cowboy was telling her how he knew me and how he could introduce the two of us together and all this sort of stuff. Well, that guy wound up showing up to her work because he went to pick her up as usual, and he was like, so you know Lady Dory Bell, huh? And the Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Vidal, apparently was like, yeah, and it's like, that is not the guy you buck up to. <laughs> for, Cal for, for Celtic Cowboy or John Vidal to, to buck up to that particular guy. <laughs> lucky he was still breathing after that. That being said, um, the, the, that guy who's like, family told me about it, and I was like, I got this. And so I called Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Villiall, and in front of a whole bunch of people, I, I lit into Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Villiall. Don't you ever name drop. Don't you Ever. You know what? I don't even want my name anywhere near your face, sort of thing. <laughs> like, lit into him. And it was already after being threatened to go see that Lord of the Rings, whatever. Later, about a year and a half later, um, Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Vidal, had let me know that he was going to be in San Antonio for, I think it was Exotic Easter, it was 2012. It was the last year that I had gone. And I said, you could spend the night on the couch. That's it. And then there was a point in time where he tried to have something occur, and he was similarly dealt with in regards to that one particular scuba diver. would be the best way to explain how that had gone. And he threw a fit. And then he calmed down. And then I went upstairs, went to sleep, and woke up with him in my bed, and then there were issues, and he left. Because that was obviously not appreciated, not wanted, not needed, or anything like that. And uh, I had contacted um, the owners of Temple of Flesh and let Krista know in specific. 
And, you know, if you don't want me to volunteer, I won't volunteer, you know, but if you still need the help, and she was like, we'll just keep you separated from that one. Fantastic. And so then there was just one problem after the other, after the other, no matter what I did that night, it was just somebody complaining here and somebody complaining there and this and that. And it's just, I, okay, fine. I, I'll go do this instead. Okay. Well, I don't understand this. So, okay. Well, because I asked questions about, for example, cameras and the private dungeon area. And I had told people to stop taking pictures because they weren't just taking pictures of whoever they were with. They were taking pictures of people along the entire wall. Um, I got in trouble for standing up for the different people. And so I was no longer a DM at that point. And I was, okay, I'll go walk security, which wound up working out because, um, well, there was a, a guy, he was, he was being, he was on his way out of the Marine Corps at the time. Um, but we had talked for a while. I'd helped out with security, um, walked the parking lot a few times. And, um, one of the times of walking the parking lot, the guy was, uh, he went on his own to go walk. And... I had asked the other security guards where he had gone and they were like, Oh, he just went for a walk and I don't have a good feeling about that. <laughs> so I'm going to, if I don't come back in a few minutes, you, you, you got to come wherever I'm at. Okay, fine. And went and there, there were, there was a male and a female who were running their mouth to, um, the, the Marine. <laughs> And those who know that particular type of anger and fury going through, especially a Marine guy, um, probably not the smartest idea the way I did it, but it was the only way I could to like get him to not go to prison, um, basically. And, you know, hey, I know I shouldn't technically touch your shoulder, but, you know, hey, <laughs> how you doing? Hi. Hi, see, look, bright red. <laughs> Pay attention, look, hi. Hi, hey, you remember me? <laughs> hey, look at the hair, yeah, yeah. Get back from him. And, you know, and, and there was a situation where uh, that male and female backed off. And, and and the Marine Corps guy, you know, he, he calmed down and didn't go to prison. And then later that night, um, there was a fire in the dumpster right next to the um, smoking section where there were uh, plastic tarps over the um, smoking section right next to, like the flames were just, when coming around the corner, the flames were just about to reach to that area. It's like, ah, whew, no. Okay, um, <laughs> hold on a sec. Okay, I'm gonna go get someone real quick. <laughs> Just give me a second. And then I ran and I was like, hey, fire extinguisher. <laughs> Great. And so, um, but that was the last time that I had seen Ish, uh, technically, um, Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Vidal. We didn't get along in the way that he wanted to get along. And one of the things that I had joked about in reference with his ex-wife, Kim, who I had met in the pagan community and had defended her at um, the last year that Excalibur Fair was going on um, as the Excalibur Fair, uh, literally shortly after being surrounded by five guys in a bunch of weird makeup and tattered clothing holding weapons in their hands and then they were surprised that I was ready to fight them. I don't know. <laughs> they just jumped out of trees with weapons in their hands and threatened my fairy wings. I don't know. Anybody else that would be like <laughs> you <laughs> 
Don't make me go New Jersey on you. <laughs> I grew up in certain places. Don't, don't. <laughs> I will use your weapons on you. You don't know. <laughs> and so shortly after that particular <clears throat> situation, um, his now, or at least shortly after that situation, his then ex-wife Kim had been yelled at by some female who was wearing suede shoes. <laughs> was yelling at Kim for wearing a fur corset for killing animals. Think about that. <laughs> What's even funnier is she was a blonde, a natural blonde, and <laughs> the natural blonde who was wearing suede shoes <laughs> was saying she was a part of PETA and calling Kim an animal murderer <laughs> for wearing a fur corset from roadkill that she had, you know, found on the side of the road and, well, just picked it up and was able to reuse it instead of letting it just rot, essentially. So <laughs> instead, the blonde female who was wearing suede shoes... <laughs> claiming to be a part of PETA, yelling at the friend Kim video. <laughs> so I stood in front of Kim and, and pointed out the suede shoes to the blonde, the natural blonde, and she threw a fit and told me that I didn't know what I was talking about as far as her wearing suede shoes and being a hypocrite. She, she didn't see... <laughs> How she was wearing suede shoes made her a hypocrite for yelling at somebody for wearing a fur corset um, because they were and I had asked her where she thought suede came from and she didn't have an answer so I let her know it was part of a cow it's a softer part of the skin although there are other animals that suede comes from it depends on what type and judging by the types of of pattern from the um, suede in her shoes. I was like, yeah, that looks like a cow. So just um, <laughs> kind of a little weird for you to yell at somebody wearing a fur corset while you're wearing suede shoes. Just saying. <laughs> and I already had a whole bunch of adrenaline running through me at that point, as I said, because shortly before I had been surrounded by five males who had weapons in their hands that jumped out of trees and were surprised that I was ready to... I don't think they took me seriously at that time. And then they, and then some of them figured out I was very serious that I was ready to use their weapons on them. But then they also, the ones that realized that also realized that I had never been to a Renaissance fair before. And their weapons were unsheathed. And I cannot tell a lie. I was ready to use their weapons on them very easily. No problem. And some of their instruments were actually quite sharp and sharp enough that that is what it is. So anyway, um, so, uh, Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Vidal, had certain issues that he, he had thrown, he had even brought up a few of the events in reference to the Temple of Flesh event, as well as the event in, um, Dallas saying that, well, his words, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have even known about the events. Okay. What does that have to do with anything? Well, we didn't hang out. You went out and, like, hung out with other people? And you went home with other females. We didn't, like, set it up as a date, and I'm letting you know it was never a date for me to begin with. I bought my own ticket. I didn't need you to buy me a ticket. <laughs> If you're not going to declare it, or at least ask, if realistically let me know, or at least ask as it to be a date, I'm not going to look at it as a date. I'm going to look at it as we're hanging out. 
and that's it. If you get offended by that, that is not my problem. That's your problem. If you, <laughs> because if you're going to think that I'm going to automatically assume that because we're hanging out, that means it's a di no. If you do not flat out specify it is a date or you are looking at it as a date, I am not looking at it as a date ever. That's not how I view things. It does not matter what lifestyle I know you from. I don't care. You don't at least make the attempt to give me that, like, heads up before going and meeting up. I am not going to look at you at anything beyond going to talk. And that is it. That's just how I am. And there are plenty of guys who could very much attest to that being very realistic. There would be, you know... The first guy I dated <laughs> after scuba diving for a really long time, he actually had to specify that we went on a date or we were going to meet for a date. I should specify, he said. And we want to meet for a date. Yeah, okay, we can meet for a date. Yeah, I can, I, I can do that. And that was how that went. <laughs> then there was, <laughs> then there was the guy that I was engaged to twice, and he flat out like had asked me, you know, about the date aspect for the first date that we went on. So I knew that that was a date, but I had no idea that he had been flirting with me. <laughs> Apparently for months. He learned real quick. <laughs> I had no idea that he was flirting with me whatsoever. Because I don't look at things like that. And then... <laughs> I don't even know what that looks like, to be honest. Um, anyway. <laughs> and then, um, well, I mean, unless I went through a dating website, which I had gone on two online dating things, and that was it. <laughs> that was it. And that was enough. <laughs> so, um, and then, whatchamacallit, as far as um, after that, dating-wise, um later than, you know, Patrick Kennedy, that whole thing. Um, and then, and he had to let me know it was a date. And, and that was much later, although I don't really see the Bank of America thing as a date, but he said it was a date. I don't see how it was a date, but anyway. And then, um, even with uh, the couple that I dated, literally knew to say it as a date <laughs> for me to actually view it as such. And then the guy that I was dating that I didn't tell anybody that I was dating yet because we hadn't made it official that we were exclusive. I get that that's very old school and that's fine. I'm perfectly content with that. However, you know, we didn't specify that it was exclusive. Not that I was seeing anybody else, just, you know, hadn't set those boundaries so that way I understood and and he understood and you know then I got the messages that I got later on which again I didn't know about the hacking and stalking and all that stuff so yeah so for <laughs> Chan Vidal also known as Celtic Cowboy to be like oh well it was a <laughs> boy <laughs> I don't know who you think you're talking to but uh-uh Before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, if it was not stated that I was being taken out on a date, I didn't look at it like that. And there is one particular guy <laughs> who could very much verify that um, in a very big specific because, well, we, we were friends before <laughs> and then we remained friends because... He said that it was like he took his little sister on a date, and I looked at him and I was like, well, you're kind of like a big brother taking me on a date, so it's kind of weird. So, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Which is funny because then, well, ish, because then later he had not realized what had occurred um, at the time, but he had told my now dead ex-husband then... <laughs> And said, oh, I'm calling to speak with my girlfriend. <laughs> Meaning me. 
that didn't go so well. Um, I dealt with that. And so, yeah, but yeah, he had made the joke, you know, oh, I'm calling to speak with my girlfriend. And <laughs> but he's married, so, you know, that obviously, and that was many years ago. Anyway, so as far as Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Vidial, yeah, no, never went on a date never did anything with and wouldn't have ever crossed that line mainly because I saw how he treated Kim and how he had cheated on her repeatedly and and she had let me know what he had put her through and the the guilt that she felt because of the stuff that he put her through that wasn't even her fault and so, yeah, no. After what he had done to her? Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. I understand. And I comprehend that people do have the ability to change for the better. But by the way, Celtic Cowboy, also known as John Vidial, was... No. Now, threatening to tie me to a chair to make me watch Lord of the Rings? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. That. Mm -mm. Nope. That, um. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. So, that being said, hopefully that clarifies some things. And, uh, comment share like subscribe all that sort of stuff and you guys have a good one